Uh, I know I swore off of energy drinks, but the occasional coffee is needed. For those of you who follow my Instagram or Snapchat, you know the last two and a half, three weeks, I haven't had any energy drinks. There you go. Thanks, man. Enjoy. So, I'm not drinking energy drinks, but the occasional... Ooh. I like that Tacoma. Really like that sandy color they come out with the new ones. But yeah, I'm not drinking energy drinks, but the occasional coffee is just needed for a good pick-me-up every once in a while. And Starbucks has like the frou-frou coffees and I like it, so. Anyways, for today's theme, we are going to start doing the fuel system for the all-wheel drive CRX. Now, before we actually dive right into it on the drive home i want to touch base a little bit with what people are doing for all-wheel drive and fuel systems and um, what i'm personally going to do so obviously the differential in the drive shaft is going to be riding right through where the oem fuel tank for all of these cars is now on the very very rare models that came i think in europe for the all-wheel drive civics and all-wheel drive integras look it up there were a few produced i want to say it's in the 500 range throughout the years uh, don't quote me on it but those that were produced already with all-wheel drive as well as the wagon that had all-wheel drive has a very specific gas tank that's basically um, designed around the necessity of space for the all-wheel drive 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 shaft and uh, differential so what some people have been doing some companies have been manufacturing specific uh, fit, specific fitted uh, fuel cells for the stock location i believe fcs is making a fuel cell that's uh fits right between everything uh with the drive shaft and all and there should be i think two or three other companies that don't come to mind right now uh, that also are producing a fuel cell to have that stock fill stock location feel to it we could actually make one ourselves or go with one of these companies I don't really see the huge necessity of having a stock fill location. A lot of people love it. I don't really care to be honest with you. It's it's kind of like a, a race car. It's not a strictly race car, but it's not a daily driver for sure. So what I did, I purchased offline, I actually got it on eBay, a 20 gallon fuel cell. And 20, 20 gallons is a lot for the fuel capacity. Obviously we don't have to run it full always, but the reason I, I chose the 20 gallon is because in the town that I live, Palm Coast, there's no E85 available. Although you can go to Daytona or North St. Augustine, which is about 30 minute drive both ways, or 30 minute drive to each one of those um, for E85, and which is usually what I do for the Integra. Uh, so having a 20 gallon fuel cell, I'll be able to have all that extra gas that I need if I wanted to drive down with the car, get gas and drive back and still have some left to ride around town and whatnot. So I went with that. Um, the bongs on the bottom of the fuel cell are 10 AN-10. We're gonna be running a dash eight for the fuel system for the feed. So we have a step down uh, little bunk for that. And Shane, which maybe later on today I'm gonna go pick up, is giving me a Bosch 044 fuel pump, which also has dash eight fittings on it. And we have two fuel filters, one from the tank to the fuel pump, one in line right there, and then one right by the fuel rail um, towards the engine bay side of things. So I'm gonna get home right now, set up the camera on time-lapse, start dropping the tank, and just pretty much go from there and show you guys the process and everything. So we are back in the garage right now. I know it's kind of clustered right now. Hopefully in the next couple days I can free up some space. Those tires are going onto the truck. I'm gonna get a bike rack for all our bikes and make a little bit more organized over here. Um, for those of you asking about the Integra, it's right up here on my trailer. I actually have it under wraps. Wait cobwebs or spider webs up there. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, it's under wraps. Wasn't really doing anything with it until I saw Boosted Boys last video. Said that they are more than likely coming down to uh, Bradenton next month. So hopefully we bring it back out to the Cletus and Cars event and have a couple fun runs. So we're gonna push the CRX real quick right out of the garage. I have to get some stuff under the bench and then I think I'll flip it around or I might just take the gas tank from in the driveway part of it. Um, but yeah, we'll start working on that and yeah.
All right, so I have the car up on jack stands. I'm not using just the jack. I actually have jack stands to be safe. I really hope you guys do so the same at home. Just wanna show you the interior real quick. Uh, something that we had done in the previous videos, we had painted the rear, and I really love the contrast of having the stock filler right here. Uh, although we're not gonna be using it since we're getting rid of the stock tank. So the first few things that we need to do is remove these clamps right there. They're just basic flathead and Phillips head, depending if you have the OEM clamps or not. Once that is done, obviously we can remove that assembly right there. And this is just the gas tank. It's not too involved. It's pretty self-explanatory on both things and it'll come off. So right here we have uh, just some 12 millimeter nuts that hold the hangers onto the actual gas tank. As you can see over there, it's a pretty big unit. So I'm gonna be measuring it as well. Uh, I'm not sure if this car still has fuel since it was sitting for a couple years, but obviously we wanna drain if there is any, which we could probably have done it with the car down so the incline isn't towards the front of the gas tank. But there's normally a 17 millimeter nut right there on almost all Honda gas tanks. And you're just gonna loosen that up and all the fuel should come out uh, if it's level or if it's inclined toward this side to be in, in the bottom side, not in the air. And uh, yeah, besides that, there should be a few electrical components on the top of the gas tank, which would be right over here where the fuel feed is. And we'll be disconnecting that as well. We've got a couple of Phillips head screws to take off. And it's starting to drizzle right now. So I wonder if we'll have much time to do all of this, but let's take these out. there it's a nice connector that's off and I believe this is for the level sensor uh, once we start to drop the tank I'll actually be able to see that a lot closer or I can just disconnect it all from right there and I'll just uh, pull this wiring and it'll come down with the tank itself and we have just a regular bin where I'm gonna be draining the fuel it's gonna get impacted and nothing came out. So it's either all towards the front of the tank right now or it's empty. So I'll just plug this back up. And now using 12s, I can start taking the mounts off. And this one is a little bit too long, so I'll just have to use a wrench on that side. Now, normally when the two straps from the front are taken off, there is still a little, a hin a little hinge on the front. Let's see if I can take the camera a little closer to show you exactly what I'm talking about. So this should stay supported for the time being. Looks like there's a little cover at the moment. Now that that's off, this is the gas tank itself and this is the little mount. I'm gonna lift on the gas tank. And you can see that it comes off of the mount. This is a lip and can't get a good angle. You can kind of see on the gas tank, there's that little area that's able to ride on that. So now that the back of the tank is actually down, you can see right here, this is where the fuel feed and return is. Obviously, we're not going to be using either of these since we're going with a fuel cell. I'm going to be doing my own lines as well as a return. Uh, so this is just going to get unbolted for the ease at the moment. We're just going to take this off, which should be a 17 millimeter uh, head for the banjo fitting. And for the return, I believe it's just a hose. And yes, there's a little hose clamp right there. 
And here's the wiring we were talking about before. We still have the gas filler area right there that is also just hose clamps to remove. So I'll get working on that real quick and this should be ready to drop completely. that out now that I can incline it I'm gonna drain whatever fuel is in there Probably about a gallon or two in here. Not a lot, but it's definitely old gas, so we're not going to be using it. And we're doing E85 anyway. There's actually quite a bit of fuel in here. And to be honest with you, it's not light, but it's definitely not as heavy as I thought it would be. So I can't wait to put that on the scale and actually see how much it weighs. And it's really coming down right now. It's starting to drizzle pretty hard. And we actually got quite a bit of fuel out of there, even though it looks all yuck, but that's what was in there, sitting towards the front of the tank and not in the back. The camera isn't picking up the rain. You can just look at the contrast between right there drizzling and not under the car. So I think I'm just gonna move things inside right now, even though it's kind of tight, but continue on in there. All right set the scale up right here. I'm just gonna hold it that way. I can make sure that it doesn't tip over since the scale is pretty small and the gas tank's pretty big. Weighs in at 26 pounds. Yeah, right about 26 pounds, the OEM tank. And that's completely drained of fuel which actually isn't pretty heavy at all for an OEM Honda tank. That's pretty light. So I'm just gonna grab my fuel cell real quick and do the exact same thing. All right, this whole box right here is the 20 gallon fuel cell along with uh, the fuel sender and a few other things. I'm not even gonna take it out of the box yet. I just wanna measure how much it is. That's right about 24 pounds. And that's with the packaging and everything. So it's not a lot lighter, but like I said, it's gonna be usable with the all wheel drive drivetrain that we're using. And another benefit is that it holds a lot more gas, being that I'm going to E85 and there's not any nearby, that's gonna be a huge advantage for us. Okay, so I just went ahead and unboxed the fuel cell itself. As I was saying, this is a 10 and a 10 AN fitting, as well as the tops. Uh, what we have here is a step down, so this receives a 10 millimeter, or not a 10 millimeter, a dash 10 male fitting to a female end right here, and then it comes out a dash eight, so we can fit a fitting just right over top of it, and I'm dropping everything. But that's basically just gonna go right here. I'm only using one feed, I'm not using two feeds, only one feed. Uh, so that's just gonna go right there, and I think that I'm gonna have a 90, which came with the kit that I bought online just goes straight down since this will be in the trunk location. Then if we look over here, I have two fuel filters. I'm just gonna go real quick over how this is gonna be mounted in the car. I ordered some really cheap fuel filters off of eBay. These were like 25 bucks each. And I say cheap because I started to thread this one in, it thread in perfectly fine halfway in and then the other half got really tight. As you can see, it scored up a little bit from the adjustable wrenches that I was using trying to make it work but I contacted the seller and I'm gonna see if I can get some replacement ones. But back to how I wanted to run this fuel system. I'm gonna have out of the tank, obviously a fitting to the filter, then to the pump. I don't have a pump right now because it's at Shane's. Let's pretend just for the sake of the video, that is the pump. So out of the tank, to the filter, to the pump, then the line all the way to the engine bay, and in the engine bay, another filter, 
off of the filter, obviously a fitting, and from that fitting to the fuel rail, which I have right over here. And over here I also have a dash eight um, fuel fitting welded onto my rail. It's just right there. And that's pretty much uh, sums up the routing of our fuel system. Now this is a, I think it's a $100 fuel cell that I bought online. It's very simple. If you open up the gas filler right here, I'm not sure if it'll pick it up, but you can kind of see a foam in there. Let's see if it'll focus on that. That's basically the anti-slosh foam. And this little pigtail right here is, I believe, a zero to 90 ohm uh, sensor inside. So you just get a zero to 90 ohm gauge to correspond with that. And you can have your fuel level even though it's still a fuel cell you'll be able to see how much fuel is in there not using an oem cluster gauge but an aftermarket gauge you can get them for like 15 20 bucks off of ebay as well and over here we have some e85 compatible dash 8 an line and this should be more than enough to reach from the back to the front of the car and for the return we're just going to do something simple uh, the kit for the fuel cell came with these an blockers which has the movable piece right there. Uh, I bought some ones that are just a solid piece. What I'm going to do is drill the top and put a regular fitting. And off of the return on the fuel pressure regulator, I'm just gonna do a regular hose to a hard line, have that hard line go to the back, and then have it come up in a loop. And from that point right up here, then I can do a soft line as well into the uh, bung at the top with a drilled out little fitting like I mentioned earlier, and it'll just drip right there as a fuel return. It's got anti-slosh material in the bottom and the feed is over here, so it's not gonna be any disturbance between a stream of fuel coming down and fuel coming out here. It shouldn't affect at all. Okay, I have it sitting pretty loosely right now in the rear, uh, in the trunk area of the CRX. I have my velocity stack on the bottom just to kind of hold it up into place. Obviously, it's not gonna be this high, but you can see this little leg on here. I wanna have it level with this part of the trunk. Same goes for the other side. And for the front, I'll have uh, just a few holes right there into the body itself. It's gonna line up pretty well, just so it can stay level. Uh, as for this right here, this 90 degree fitting that we were mentioning earlier is gonna go straight down. I'll cut a little hole in the floorboard right there, put a grommet as well. And that'll come out from the bottom and I think I'll do it over the lower control arm, obviously holding the lines with uh, the appropriate hardware and go around the area where the drive shaft and the differential is going to sit, which will be right here in the center. And I don't think I'm going to be doing any of the cutting today. I just kind of wanted to do a rough overview. And as soon as I get the components for Shane, which would be the fuel pump itself, as well as the new... Um, fuel filter, I'll be able to do the whole install all together. Just gonna pop the hood real quick, show you under here. But we have a few components that we're gonna be removing for cleanliness and second reason, because we absolutely just won't be needing it. One of which, I'm gonna, just gonna stand in here so I get a cl closer look. One of which is this fuel filter along with the fuel feed. What's interesting about the CRXs is opposed to the rest of the Hondas, the lines for the fuel actually go inside of the car. So I'll be lifting the side carpet where the fuel lines are as well and I'll be removing that. And I believe the fuel return is this one right here. It's just a regular hose and it goes to the hard line right there. We're gonna get rid of that since we're doing a completely brand new fuel return as well as fuel feed and all of this will make sure that the engine bay also looks a lot cleaner than it is before. So this has a flare fitting on it. You probably should use a flare wrench if, if you plan on reusing it. In our case, we don't. So, uh, so you have the chance of damaging it if you use a regular wrench. In this case, it didn't slip or anything, so it's completely fine. It's always good to use the proper tools if you're planning on keeping things in good condition. 
So the fuel filter assembly is off. This little grommet that's also kind of dry is gonna be coming off. We're just gonna run inside of the car now and look behind the dash and through the carpet where this actually runs. In the CRX chassis that we're using in this specific build, uh, there's three hard lines that we're gonna be removing for the fuel. If you look inside of the dash, we obviously have the heater core and AC assembly already removed. And it makes it a lot easier. You have two hard lines right there. I believe one is a vent and the, the bigger one is the feed. Uh, don't quote me on it, but I know that it's for the fuel components. And then here comes the third one, which is the actual return, which goes up into the engine bay, what I showed you earlier. And that goes all around, all along right there. Then under the filler, under the car. And that's the lines that we disconnected earlier. So we should be able to just pop off these clips. And uh, since we're not gonna be using it, I'm just gonna be cutting it and it makes it a lot easier to take out as well as the clips up there. And they'll just be as easy as removing it. And then I will remove this as well. There we go. Now it should come out. There we are which I really hate taking this out because it's such a beautiful bronze piece. And this really looked really good in contrast with the red of the rear. But like all good things must come to an end, this does as well. Now for these lines, I'm just gonna remove this grommet first and then we can see clearly what we need. On the bottom, I believe there's a 10 millimeter bolt holding uh, the thicker line, the feed right there as well. And then you have all these little clips, which basically just pop right up. Same goes for the ones over here. And you can start taking off section by section. They're all loose right there. Yes. You can see right there where it splits off from the other two. And it goes right into the firewall. So I'm just going to maneuver these lines out of the way. And I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so that pretty much sums up part one of the fuel system video. Hopefully tomorrow or the day after I can start recording for the rest. So today we basically just went over dropping the tank, removing the stock lines, and uh, looking over all the components we're gonna be using. If I'm not mistaken, tomorrow morning I'll be able to go pick up the fuel pump itself and I can start making the lines, and then I'll show you all that process and how we're gonna run them exactly. But thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. Just wanna say a huge thank you for everybody who's been showing all the love and support recently. We really appreciate that over here. And uh, make sure to stay tuned for more videos to come. Thanks for watching, always, guys, and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.